Haven't had a very good evening, have you? Not very, no. Well, never mind, darling. It's only your first lesson. And my last, I've left. What? <laughs> yes, I have left that so-called night school. A more precise term for it might be a breeding ground. What are they breeding? Familiarity and bad manners. Uh. Our so-called art master was a bearded young lout, young enough to be my... A young bearded lout with filthy feet who would insist on calling me Margie. A lout? <laughs> exactly. And that's why you left? Isn't that enough? No, not really, no. What's he like as a teacher? A poser. Do you know he's paid by the council? He strutted round that classroom with his Beethoven T-shirt and open-toed sandals like some left-bank gigolo. And when... Yeah? I asked him, very politely, Mr Ives, what size lump of clay do you think I should use? <laughs> do you know what he did, Jerry? He stared, quite unashamedly, at my breasts <laughs> and said, in your case, Margie, about a 36B. <laughs> Disgusting. Of course, everyone found it in <laughs> I should have suspected what sort of people they'd have there. If the council had the good sense to charge 50 guineas a term, it would A, keep the riffraff out, and B, pay for a proper teacher. I bet Barbara laughed. I'm afraid she did, Jerry. <laughs> then poor Barbara's always been easily led. Barbara? Of course, there was only one thing to do, so I did it. I told him he was a perverted degenerate and walked out. So that's that? Yes. And to think we pay for that hippie out of our rates. Well, never mind, darling. Cheer yourself up by writing a nice, snotty letter to the council. <laughs> oh, it's very sweet of you, Jerry, but... As it is, I have to scour Bond Street for basically shoddy clothes, which are really only fit for scarecrows. Good God, Margot! I mean, 55 pounds! Barbara would buy three dresses for that money. Yes. What do you mean, yes? I mean that the homespun suits Barbara. I've always thought you looked rather cute. Oh, I see. So you're married to a frump, are you? How on earth do you make that equation? I didn't make any equation, Jerry. You're the one who used the word. The word frump never passed my lips. It didn't need to. It was written all over your face. I'd sooner pay the electricity bills, personally. I'd sooner you paid the electricity bills, personally. <laughs> Meaning what, Jerry? When I come home from the office sometimes, our house looks like the Blackpool Illuminations. So you want me to stumble about in the dark, do you? I'm just saying you might consider the price of electricity sometimes. I'm very sorry, Jerry. Perhaps we ought to live in an almshouse and be done with it. You'd have made a marvellous photographer the way you enlarge everything. <laughs> <laughs> very Coming from someone who's just forbidden me to burn a single electric light bulb in my own house. I'm just saying you might save it sometimes. For instance, when you're upstairs and you come downstairs, turn off the light upstairs. And fall down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Jerry, if you want me to fall down the stairs, why don't you just trip me up or loosen the stair rods or simply throw me bodily down and have done with it? Don't tempt me. <laughs> To the liquid diet. Who's going to join me in a spot of Geneva gin? Please, Barbara? Mmm, Margot, I will if you will. Yes, why not? Let's all get drunk. That seems to be Jerry's answer to everything. Oh, for heaven's sake. Mr. Bett says Brian's got a lovely nature. Oh, good Brian. The horse's name is Brian. Oh, come and have another look at him, Tom. He's lovely. He might be lovely. He might be able to knit and do conjuring tricks, but he's just not a practical proposition, and that is a fact. But I don't want him as a pet. I'm not an idiot. He'd be a... He'd be a working horse. That is the point. There's not enough work for him to do to warrant his keep. I'm sorry, love. It's a nice idea, but it's just not efficient, is it? Is it? Don't know. Is it? Is it? No. Now, you know I'm right, don't you, love? Yes, I do, so shut up. Doorbell. Well, it must be if you say it is. You're the one that's always right. <laughs> oh, anything happened while we were away? Oh, yes. 
Yes, your allotment came through. Ah. An allotment of what? Earth. The sort of things you see from railway carriages. It's next to mine. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. I see the real reason for that second bottle of champagne at the Krasnopolsky now. <coughs> Sweeten me up before you tell me you're going to be late for every single Sunday luncheon from now on. Why should I be? I am not a fool, Jerry. I know about allotments. They are places where men go to sit in silly little sheds so they don't have to talk to their wives. <laughs> brick by brick, she is building a madhouse. Look, if you don't want to talk to me, Jerry, at least have the courage to look me straight in the face and say, shut up, Margot. Shut up, Margot. I'll tell you this, Jerry. The male animal has a lot to answer for. What have I done now? All of you. Down through the ages, and it's the woman who always suffers. You drag her along behind you like a mere thing, an object, a chattel. Look, I simply... Don't like... interrupt, Jerry. <laughs> Just put that hi-fi equipment away and make the coffee. Anything you say? <laughs> chattel? <laughs> As I seem to have the floor, there are just one or two remarks I should like to make. Firstly, I did not seek office. It is simply that I seem to have been chosen as the standard bearer for those of us who seek to put a more professional gloss on our production. Yeah. Here, here. Now, let me touch on Dolly Mineshaft for a moment. Here we go. Vilification. No, Mr. Chipchase. Admiration. No one is more aware than I of how much Dolly Mineshaft has put into this society. And no one is more aware of the awful toll it has taken on her general health, her nerves, and her voice. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if at this moment, Dolly were not sitting in some taverna with her bottle of ouzo, almost wishing that she loses this election. She doesn't even know about it. And if I am chosen, <clears throat> To take up the tiller of our little ship, I shall do so humbly. And in so doing, I shall call upon all of you to wish dear Dolly a happy harbor in the back row of the chorus. Where are you going, Jerry? <laughs> Early caller? An emissary from the Music Society. Miss Mountshaft's brother-in-law with a steel plate in his head. <laughs> what do you want? Some metal polish? <laughs> no. Having successfully proved to be the society's most inept producer, he is now trying to show an equal non-flair as our costume designer. I thought you should be the first to see our costume designs, Mrs. Ledbetter, as we already think of you as our own sweet charity, little sycophant. <laughs> and worse, a deviant. Oh, what's he drawn? See for yourself. Hmm. All right. Not very well drawn, but all right. All right. Costumes like these are fit only for some back alley striptease club. <laughs> They're just dresses. Well, those dresses. Slits and frills and plunging necklines. Dustbin designs. <laughs> and from a dustbin mind. It's that steel plate, I think. It's making it fun. <laughs> well... It's that oil in Mrs. Weaver's tank, you see. What about it? Well, must be worth quite a lot of money. I mean, say, 200 gallons? Well, what's that worth these days? No idea. Well, about 100 pounds at least, I say. Yes. So? It's just lying there. Well, there's not much else oil can do, is there? <laughs> then I got to thinking about Mr. Greaves, you know, the farmer we got our wool from. Have you been inhaling creosote again? <laughs> Seriously. Mr. Greaves uses oil-fired central heating for his calves. Now, I reckon he'd happily swap some nice bales of straw for 200 gallons of oil. Quite a lot of straw, in fact. Tom! Well, it's just lying there. 
Mrs. Weaver obviously didn't want it or she'd taken it with her. Well, of course she didn't take it with her. I don't suppose removal firms are equipped with tankers. <laughs> so whose is it then? Well, it isn't ours. It would be if we siphoned it off. <laughs> you spiv! <laughs> what do you mean, spit? Well, you'll be getting a camel hair coat and a black trilby next. <laughs> what are you going to do? Stand in the corner and say, psst, want to buy some oil that fell off the back of the lorry? I told you what I'd use it for as an honest swap for something that we need. You can't have an honest swap if you've stolen the oil in the first place. I don't like the word stolen. Well, what would you call it? Acquired. <laughs> That's like saying fibber instead of lie. It's the same thing. It isn't. How? They're spelled differently. <laughs> anyway, the point is you can't steal something that doesn't belong to anybody. Can you I? don't know that. I do. You think you do. Yes, I think I do. You want to think you do. All right, I want to think. No, that isn't it at all. It's obvious. Yes, I think it is obvious to somebody who's just dismissed stealing and fencing all in one go. Why don't you pop up to her roof and have the lead off it while you're at it? <coughs> you're very irrational sometimes, aren't no, you? No, I'm not. I just don't believe in stealing by finding, and neither do you. But if we siphoned it off at night, no one would ever know. <laughs> Something? That oil. Oh, Tom, I thought we'd settled that. We have, but there's been a development. What? Some filthy swine has been pinching it. <laughs> How do you know? I've just been to check the gauge. It's, it's nearly half gone. The whole thing's halfway down. Well, who could that be? I don't know, but I think it's disgusting. <laughs> well, you were all ready to pinch the stuff yourself last night. That's quite different. I had a worthwhile motive. The care and comfort of our pigs. Well, I suppose whoever else is pinching it has got a worthwhile motive. They're hardly likely to drink it. Well, they're not getting any more of it, I'll tell you that. Why? Because we are. Oh, you can justify that now, of course. Yes, I can. What source for the goose is, is, is gander for the other? <laughs> Why should we sit about being all fine and good when someone else is pinching the stuff? Boy, when you go blind in one eye, you really go blind in one eye. What? Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Margot. This is Mr. Carter. Evening, Mr. Good. Good evening, Mr. Carter. Right, that's got the poncy formalities over. I'm a busy man. If you'll just make your threats, I'll ignore them and you can clear off. No threats. I just want to have a chat. That's what Hitler said at Munich. 